Podcast. Part four. Further analysis. Kantian ethics is really, really Kantian awesome. Kantian ethics <laughs> works perfectly. <laughs> Everyone can understand it, including you and me. <laughs> <laughs> so Kant's fantastic and it works perfectly. There are. <laughs> I think it makes complete logical sense. <laughs> I think there are good parts to Kant's ideas. Let's do Kant's. Let's do the good. I like. We, Kant. we always jump into it. last yeah. episode. We used Theron. We said, "So what are our and criticisms?" Finally, we can criticize it. It's the juicy bit of the podcast. <laughs> Just <laughs> the cynical that's, nature of us all. Yeah. The yeah, actually, I think maybe we should make a more conscious decision to say that's, here's why it's yeah. actually good. So and what's then, good about Kant, Ollie? <laughs> well, I, I like the idea. Um, I mean, I kind of agree with him to a certain extent. I mean, I think if I don't agree with him that everybody uh, has the level of reason that he probably thinks people do to be able to make these decisions. But I think that if everyone did follow the categorical imperative, then society would be far better. Absolutely, I think. Um, with I, the general maxims. With the, yeah, with the general maxims. I mean, it's it's difficult as well because you could say that no, I'll save that. So, yeah, positive okay. times. Yeah. In, real, yeah. in, in the real world, in our day-to-day goings-on, we don't get faced with Nazis at the door yeah. or pirates attacking our sh- ships full of fish. Like, you can use the categorical imperative to go about your daily activity and just act for the sake of duty. Don't be selfish and do it for some other end. Yeah. Don't do something just because it gives you pleasure or because you think it's someone's told you to do it. Do it because it's it's it, it's... What you should do, it's your duty. Yeah, and I, yeah, I really like that. And I think that, you know, I know a lot, well, as a teacher, you know, I mean, if you are, if I ask a, someone, a young person, like, why do you do what you do? Normally, especially if it's like something moral, why do you not misbehave? It's because I'll get punished yeah. if I don't do it like that. And I think, I, yeah, I would prioritize definitely people who do the right thing in inverted commas because mm-hmm. they feel like they ought to do it rather than someone who does it because they have to or just because, you know, they'll get arrested if they don't. I know we're doing strengths, but just, to jump in Schopenhauer, the German philosopher from 1788 to 1860 said, it is cold and dead because it's followed without love, feeling or inclination, but merely out of a sense of duty. It dehumanizes. Well, see, that's an interesting point because one of my favorite parts about Kant is actually the, it, I would almost argue it rehumanizes the way we treat people. The, in the sense that you could destroy someone's life for the the uh, like the good of the many well this makes sure that everybody is actually treated with dignity like if you're and treated you're, might perhaps it's a better uh, understanding of equality in that way yeah the, yeah exactly that you you're not you're not treating someone because you want anything out of them you're not you're not doing something to uh, the benefit of the many it's like no if you just treat people with basic respect and everyone managed to do that. That wouldn't that be amazing? Like that I really like that about. Yeah, that. and in the 1700s, I mean, who else would be saying that? Probably no one. I mean, this is uh, you know, if, if Kant genuinely believed that everyone had a certain intrinsic dignity um, and value, he certainly wrote about it enough. No, really yeah, well, that yeah, kind yeah. of comes through. That well, that's the product of the Enlightenment, though, isn't it? Because you have people like John Locke and Rousseau, the, these political philosophers, who are kind of now asking the question about like. You know, how should we be governed? And, and they're kind of getting away from this divine right of kings. Like we need to be ruled over in this way. It's kind of like, it's the collective will of the people that Rousseau would say. It's like, that's, that's what we need to do. And it's, it's looking at treating people as ends as well as just means. But just on what Ollie was saying, it's not just, it's not just that he believed them. He knows them. Any other strengths to Kant's? Yeah, I think. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, well, it, it does. I think it. It's weirdly it does speak to an almost like a practical sense of things where um, you know if you take something that people just know is wrong, um, mm. where you like, well, you you tell me, is there anything well, anything that you think is just kind of morally? But there's a distinction here between intuition and yes. knowing, isn't there? So like Kant doesn't want to say you know things intuitively or wrong and right. No. He's saying if you think about it enough, you're just going to know the a priori truth will show itself to you. So right. is there anything which the a which a is there anything which shows itself to me when I use my reason purely? Mm-hmm. Not many, to be honest. I'm good. Like, but yeah, okay. But- good, good strengths yeah. loads heaps like <laughs> no but what the big things though when when and this is i guess 
when we were just talking, it's kind of a, an extension of the same point we we're just saying, but the, the importance of the dignity of a, a person, but like whether it's, it's something like extreme, like sex trafficking or something like that, like it does just kind of make sure that these big, uh, exploitations of, of, of human beings kind of just get ruled out. Yeah. And like, utilitarianism could perhaps justify them. Yeah. Wouldn't it? It's mm-hmm. like using for the pleasure of the many. How about natural law? We haven't spoken about natural law. What's Aquinas going to say about something like sex trafficking? Well, it would be wrong because it, it wouldn't fit into well either the primary precepts, preservation of, of ordered society, or the or, God, or like or the reproduction. Um, Let's just take that for Aquinas. Yeah, yeah for reproduction. Okay, but take something like slavery. Yeah, um, we we use the example. Worshiping God means you just treat other people the way you'd like to be treated. Mm-hmm. So you can just you can just say there was one big primary precept there. Sure, we, but um, yeah, he avoids that completely, doesn't he? He avoids massive immoral acts occurring because you need to treat humans as ends in themselves. Yeah. You really like that, don't you? The ends in themselves. Yeah, because it totally like that speaks to what I think about how you should treat people. It's just I don't know whether or not that's just me somehow stumbling upon the categorical imperative through my life and not think of and I'm not actually phrasing it in that way but I would I'd like to think that I wouldn't actively go out of my way to use people as means to an end although and, and this is one of those things where everyone's like well surely we use people as means to an end all the time mm. yeah Kant doesn't say that's actually a yep. problem but what about your iPhone we use this example in utilitarianism mm, true. now are you, yeah. you, although you're saying you like the idea of not using people as means to your yeah. ends when you purchase an iPhone are you falling short of Kant's no because well, no you're not because you're you're allowed to like you're allowed to use people as like means just not entirely as means like if so if you're any transaction is going to be you're you're getting something out of them aren't you yeah. that's not a problem we can do that in our day-to-day life because if we if we said like sure you can't use anyone as a means to an end you would never be able to go to the shop to buy something because you're using them as a means to get your mm-hmm. thing that's okay as long as that's not the only thing so if you if but you that, lied would... to them and you were using them as a means to an end that's like removing their human dignity out of it you're not respecting them um you're still allowed to use people as long as that's not like the entire purpose of it but you could make a strong argument and we did last episode that the entire purpose of people born into factories in third world countries is to build iphones and then chuck themselves off a railing no wait how how sorry because if you purchase an iphone you've used people that person's life has been dedicated entirely to the production of iphones now, so for you to purchase an iPhone, you're using that person's life for your own end. So it's not a small thing like a transaction in the shop, which you've just painted. I buy something, oh, I'm using you to further, I'm using the cashier to further my need to eat a, a delicious wimpy hamburger. But then you have people who spend yeah. their entire lives on it. You're using them entirely as a means to your end in that scenario. Yeah, so that that's where I guess, like, if I... If I, I I should probably say, I don't try and live my life entirely by the categorical imperative. I don't think anyone does. But the, so yeah, if you could say if someone was to live by Kant standards, then you would absolutely not buy anything from companies who you knew were using people as means because you're like, you're facilitating that. Yeah. They um, shouldn't be doing it anyway. They should be using their reason correctly and not. Yeah, exactly. So like, I guess if everyone was fair labor, yeah. giving them fair wages, just balancing it out essentially. Sure. What, um, do, you, what do you think, Jack? Do you think people should have be users mean users mean to an end? Yeah. It reminds me of that quote we looked at last time. I concluded my remarks in utilitarianism. I forget the name of the Canadian sci-fi writer who said, "I don't care about people, but poop heads or something." <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, if you could think of some wacky thought experiment where everyone was a poop head and you can take that literally, then do you respect them just because they can think? You know, do you respect um, someone who's doing something which... I'm using the categorical imperative to justify selling beef in a bun. Um, I don't think there's anything categorically wrong with that. And then you come in and say, yes, there is something categorically wrong with it. You're just reasoning wrong. Can you use... People think they've got some kind of moral superiority because they're using their reason more correctly. So can you use people who aren't using their moral compass correctly for a means to ends? Kant sometimes is going to say yes. He's going to say you're not reasoning correctly. You've, in the case of the suicide example yeah. you drew earlier, if someone wants to do that, Kant's going to say they're not reasoning correctly. They're not using pure rationality. Um, so they 
lose their rights in the game of Kant's ethics. Yeah, because you, you kind of, once you've stepped that line, once you've kind of almost declared, I'm no longer a rational being by doing something so insanely irrational that uh, they, it kind of breaks that almost contract to yourself. Um, yeah, you, you cease to be, you cease yeah. to have that dignity that we've, we've established. Can we jump onto criticisms then? Cause this one last, nice sorry, just one last pos- uh, positive, um, before we get to the criticisms. And it's, and it's essentially there is, cause we've, we've, we've kind of criticized the idea of this too rational. Let's turn it into a negative, by the way. Okay. It okay. Seems really confident. Confident. Let's, let's go. <laughs> right. So no, but one of the things we've already been alluding to with criticisms that it's like, oh, it's too rational. It, it doesn't make sense. And I would say that, that yeah, that's, that's to a point, but I also think it gets rid of the problem of completely acting on intuition and emo- like emotion and saying like, I feel this is wrong. Well, okay. That might be in line with the categorical imperative, but just acting on pure emotional response to things isn't always going to end well. And just going on your natural inclinations, like I've always known that this is right. Well, you've grown up in a particular area. Maybe, maybe what your culture and society says is right might not actually be right. Like think, like mm-hmm. have a bit of a think about what you're doing, not just acting on pure emotion and, and inclination. I think that's also a good idea. Yeah, and a quote, I, I, like, I agree. <laughs> I can't, yeah. can't criticize that. Again, yeah. a quote from Fundamental Principles of Metaphysics. Um, Kant says pretty much that happiness is not an ideal of reason, but of imagination. So happiness isn't something we should pursue for its sake. Yeah. It links there with util. We should just use reason and we'll arrive at duty and the categorical imperative and we'll all reach it. Do you want to jump into Chris? Should we go add criticism. single criticism? Single and criticism. We'll bounce and, yep. and jump around. around with them. Yep. Do you want to start, Ollie? Yes. Yes, I would. Okay, let's start with um, what about Okay, so Kant says that everyone has this dignity, this rationality, that they have the ability to reason. Do they? You've taken mine. Oh, sorry. You can do that if you want. No. Well, both of you. Just wait. So explain your point. Okay, so let's take someone who uh, is a paranoid schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. Do they have the ability to reason the same way that someone who's not a paranoid schizophrenic would? Yeah. Let's take someone who's a vegetable who can't move or do anything. Do they have a... Yeah. Yeah, or a child... Or, you We're know. asking you, Andy. Yeah, you're Kant. I'm Kant. Hello, Kant. Well, you would, yeah, you'd have to argue that they don't have the same ability to reason as as. Did Kant have any responses yeah. to that, or not really, or did he ever respond to anything? No, he just went by his day. Oh yeah, it's worth noting like as well clockwork. that yeah, Kant, <laughs> Kant, yeah. Kant published his first John book. Was just like, hey, what about this? He's like, yeah. oh, time for my walk. <laughs> <laughs> It is worth. It, Kant yeah. does, does take a lot of walks, doesn't he? It is <laughs> la, worth. La, yeah. la, 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 la. It is worth <laughs> noting that Kant wrote his first book uh, when he was fifty-seven, yeah. and Holy. that was in yeah. seventeen eighty-one, and he died in seventeen ninety, which was only nine years later. So he probably honestly didn't get a chance. <laughs> in nine years, and he wrote <laughs> yeah. one, two, three. The critique four, of pure yeah, reason. He wrote four the books. Groundwork and, of the yeah, metaphysics. Yeah, he's got, and notes, practical he's got loads. Reasons. Yeah, and he did yeah. a lot of magazine articles. Yes, yes and yeah. Well, Heat magazine sure wouldn't be what it is today without. Good old Kant, Someone um, had to be the hunk of so, the week. So, so maybe, I guess, I guess in his lectures he may have responded to criticisms of his theory, but I mean, there must be, yeah. did he, I don't know if he well, actually ever so responded. So we mentioned earlier, he's coming before Darwin's theory of evolution, and he's not going to take that into account that some things perhaps could become rational over a massive period of time. And also he's coming before where the hard problem of consciousness is is what we spoke about in episode two. Episode three, what we spoke Judaism about in episode three. Yeah. yeah, three. Yeah. How do you know what it is like to be something? How can we say something like a bat? How do we know a bat's not rational? We can't jump into the skin of a bat and move around a little bit. We don't know what a bat is. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> we have to, you know, we're going to... Im- <laughs> you can't, you don't know what it's like to be rational. You don't know what it's like to be these things. How can you say they're not rational? Yeah. We're talking and, about chimpanzees and, and you could, yeah. very intelligent animals. How can you say they don't have this ability to reason or acquire a priori knowledge? Yeah, and even you could argue rationality could be just survival for animals, in which case the rationality of a virus is to, you know, destroy its living host organism, kind of. Or it's... Yeah, I think he's going to say that a, a priori truths is something uniquely a human can gain. So things like bats can't sit there and think about thinking about things. They just do things. Yeah. But there's nothing to say that chimpanzee can't think about its existence he's not going to sit there in a cafe and drink wine and lemonade and ponder the categorical imperative but where's the line in terms of rationality are there beings more capable of rational than us 
Kant, sorry aliens. to go on a bit of a rant. Here. <laughs> We've been looking at teleology so much. And Kant's kind of looking at the world in a teleological perspective, not in the ethics way, saying you should act out of purpose, but he looks at the world and thinks that it's finishing at the human. And this is, you know, we have some kind of stewardship over the animal kingdom, linking it with stuff we've been talking about with that and Peter Singer. We have authority over that because we're the teleological end of the process of the world. So he's making a lot of presumption there in his metaphysics and his understanding of the world outside of ethics. And you can ask the question, is teleology something which holds? And we've looked at that a bit and we've been unfair to it in the past. You could argue that Kant's arguing that there's some kind of purpose to the world. And he hasn't actually taken into account that things can just happen in an evolutionary way. Yeah. And thus creatures don't end up in being rational. There's not something that which distinguishes us from the animal kingdom and makes us unique or superior in any way. We're just intelligent animals. So those animals could be intelligent too. He's saying if there's aliens, aliens can fly over to our planet and be like, you shouldn't do that, cow squad or comparative. And they'll be like, no way, Like we know that no, too. Dude. <laughs> like, dude. They obviously landed in California. <laughs> <laughs> Surf aliens. No way, man. <laughs> You're like green. <laughs> Oh. Another criticism, Andy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, well, I'll, I guess my biggest one is one we've already alluded to, but the the just the maxims, isn't it? Really, the the idea of just how specific can you get, and there's and you can go so specific that like it just you're kind of just playing the system. Like you can get yeah. away with anything because you can universalize the super specific thing. It's like anyone called Andy wearing a red jumper, like uh, can go to the shop down the road and steal because. Like you could uni no because you could universalize that silly thing and it, like it wouldn't be logically contradictory like it, like you could do you that could and steal like you can if your basically were starving and you've got a duty to give them that in that scenario or no not even that because like what I'm getting at is that like it, it just you're breaking the system aren't you 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 can you can logically allow something to happen even if it seems to that it would go against what Kant would argue is the categorical imperative because you just you can make it so specific that you can get away with doing whatever you want to mm -hmm. um, if you personalized mm -hmm. it so much can you, you just, just respond do... and say no they have to be general well, how... well that, yeah okay so that that's where I guess but is that made clear by Kant do they have to be general um I don't think that that's necessarily there it's, it's not but clear he's... enough to say Using the gravity example, you come up with a general law of nature and he's literally asking you to do that in the categorical imperative. If you were to will this to be a law of nature, would you do it? And so the law of nature has to be something quite general. I, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, if you if you phrase it like that, then I guess that, that might... What, might you, what we want to do is when we're going into ethics, we want to say that saying that Anne Frank isn't in the loft is allowed under our ethical mm. system. And Kant's not giving us a way to do that. And by using specific maxims, we can put the carriage before the horse and say, look, this works. We're kind of going back and doing some uh, reverse engineering on the system to account for all the things we deem to be intuitively ethical. Kant's not interested in your intuitions. He's mm. not interested in whether you should, you think you should let the man walk in the house and chop your friend to bitch and all the rest of it. He, he's, it doesn't matter for Kant. He wants to say that, no, these things are wrong in and of themselves because they're not acting out a sense of duty. He doesn't want to go back and do any reverse engineering. It's just wrong. It's just not out of duty. They should be doing this too. If they think about it properly. So he's, uh, Kant's prescription might be, everyone think about this properly. We'll all reach there. Maybe he's working on the presumption that people won't sit down and think about it because they've got other things to be getting on with. Ethics is supposed to be practical. Is he ignoring that? Well, that actually, if that leads on to the perhaps my other biggest criticism, which is it's way too abstract. The, the idea that the average person could somehow make sense of this and, and use it. I mean, surely not. Mm. Like, you, mm. well, you can, like, we, can, we you, do a philosophy podcast and we engage with philosophy all the time and it's, we've struggled in the yeah. first section of this podcast so to phrase it properly and to and actually make sense of like to make it make sense yeah, yeah bentham wrote poems so people could just <laughs> yeah exactly where's the Kant's poetry? Poetry? Well, yeah. <laughs> the yeah so i i mean that you can't you expect can't, yeah. surely for for people to just stumble upon this idea and to reason and and know and and the problem is is that 
okay, let's say that people can't do that. But if you, when you try to explain it to them, Kant tries to write this down in what I assume is his best effort, because why else would he be doing it? <laughs> well, he'd have to and, give his best effort because it's a... Right, to be yeah, exactly. He, he couldn't then. universally will not to, <laughs> to put in his best effort. So, and, he, and, he, and if this is his best effort, then it's... But not he uses great, his language it? consistently. Yeah, yeah okay. He's not trying to bring that. it down to the to ethics is supposed to be for everybody. That's the yeah. purpose. That's why this branch of ethics is taught. In but this isn't. Yeah, but works, this is not for like works, it. Sorry. It. The end product, I guess, is for everybody. But for everybody to understand this fully, I just don't. I just don't think it works. Like you trying to go to the average person and sitting down and trying to explain why the, it is that they should do moral things. I mean, are they going to get their head around this? It, or are they going to care enough? Like, if you sat down and, <laughs> and like, tried to explain to them the, like, the difference between hypothetical and uh, categorical imperatives and, and all of the things we've said, they just leave. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, yeah. no, I'm going to just... I've considered it over numerous times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even here anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to anyone that's listened to this whole yeah, podcast. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Really? Congratulations. <laughs> let us know. If you're listening to this part now, let us know in some way. Because <laughs> yeah. holy hell, you'll get a shout out. This yeah, is yeah. incredible if you've made it this far. Cause yeah. can, well, we, can we criticize duty as well? Yeah. So you could argue Go that obviously it. duty, I mean, it sounds good on paper, right? It sounds like everyone has the duty to do the right thing and that would be a universal law. But... I mean, human behavior shows the opposite. Yes, being dutiful is what most of us, I guess, try to do most of the time. But, you know, if it's Saturday night and you want to go and have a couple of drinks in a pub, I mean, you can't say that everyone should do that because that would just be ridiculous. But yeah, you're still wondering the streets being cynical. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, you could still, you know, I mean, that I, I, I personally, with my moral system, would say there's nothing wrong with that. But I guess Kant would have a problem with that. The Kant... Perhaps this is a really this is gonna be a really bad example because I can't remember it fully. He used to have like dinner parties and it'd be really organized. Is this <laughs> something you can remember? So it'd be like, you know, we're gonna enjoy some food and everyone would do that and then they enjoy some leisure. You know, he's looking after yourself is not bad for Kant. Perhaps it's in your he's going to say that it's in your duty to look after yourself and yeah. keep yourself happy. That's fine. Just get to the happiness through duty. Don't have ha- happiness as the end goal. Yeah, that's mm. exactly it. Um and yeah, <laughs> yeah. understands can <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Drops the mic. <laughs> yeah. uh, what other, what other things could we criticize? Um, I mean, obviously the God. I, I mean, you, we haven't done God yet. Someone want to do God? Well, I mean, the thing is, it's interesting because I wouldn't say that's like the idea of God doesn't criticize Kant's ethics because, like, you know, if someone's coming from an, like an atheist perspective and they're saying, "Oh, God doesn't exist," well, that's fine. You still have to act in accordance to the categorical imperative regardless yeah. of that it's a you're question. still acting out ethically duty. it doesn't matter no it doesn't. it's a metaphysical claim and that we can exclude that to a separate question yeah and that's it's interesting in it's itself, fine for it? his ethics yeah. in isolation isn't it yeah um, um one thing i would say is like an a, another one would i guess be his whole point on freedom as well hmm. um like i i don't think that every choice i make is free i, do, I certainly don't think that everything i don't sit down and think about everything i do and you're guided by just yeah, your own kind of desires and, and whatnot. Should we run down this rabbit hole? There's a, cause there's a big question. I love, I love, the, I love the free. I love the free. Yeah, well, yeah, we can, we can do that. Yeah. So the question is whether we're determined or we have free will. And this yeah. is a fundamental question in philosophy, in epistemology, in metaphysically, um, in terms of ethics. Is anything we do free? Do we ever have free will? Is it all just an illusion? So some people would say no. <laughs> so the hard determines is going to say, no, the, Free will person is going to say no. Yeah. He's going to say... Yeah, so Kant, Kant's going to say, no, we, with our ability to reason, mm-hmm. we can make free choices, um, and those are the ones that are moral. So they, they we could open, freedom. This is such a massive can of worms. I feel yeah. it's... it's a, We should do a separate episode yeah. okay, just on this. So yeah, maybe... Than, okay, just as a quick summary of this point then. Okay. It's just simply that if you're making day-to-day choices, you might be led by just kind of what you've always done like maybe you have like certain inclinations that you want certain things and this is where it kind of it fits into the the idea of utilitarianism like maybe you you want to do things because it makes you happy and i think a lot of people surely almost everyone would would kind of act along those lines that you don't get out of the bed in the morning and be like how do I best fulfill the categorical imperative (laughs) you you get up and you you kind of do the things that you want to make you happy because otherwise your life might be very boring and sad and so 
if you're acting out of those inclinations so you don't get up and think about the cut you get up and you rave and then you repeat and yeah then you exactly eat. yeah and even like, you know, I mean, some people would argue that that's the illusion of choice as well, right? So if someone's like, oh, you know, I, I walk into a shop and I want to buy a chocolate bar because I want a chocolate bar yeah. because that makes me happy. But it's like, well, well actually, then you think, actually, I don't want a chocolate bar. There's some delicious verils over there, which <laughs> yeah. go wonderfully. Ooh, there's verils. They're yeah, lovely. But was it your choice to pick yeah. the verils? Like, was it, was it the or fact that you were was... conditioned by a fantastic podcast into thinking well. you had the free will, but really you've been conveyed with some fantastic yeah. advertising or it could be just something like genetics so maybe you have i don't know a deficiency in the mm-hmm. sugar that's in that bar that you want to eat yeah. so your body's like oh that'll be tasty that'll give me the sugar i need which you don't consciously think about but it's still part of your decision making yeah that's super hard determinism like every yeah. physical fact if your brain is just physical and your consciousness is just a byproduct of the physical then your free will is determined by the cause and effects that governs your brain and your body just as when you chuck a chair across the room it's determined by the hard facts yeah. it's the same for your mind and your free will you everything you do is just a brain process which you have nothing to do with yeah. You wouldn't say that a bird has free will. When a raindrop lands on a bird's beak, it just acts. It just acts out of impulse and move mm-hmm. my head really quickly for the sake of the recording. Um, <laughs> Visualize so, that. Yeah, the home. That was, that was quite something to see. <laughs> if you were to, if you were visualizing a beautiful bird on a tree and then suddenly you had Looking an like idea Jack. of a face, like, <laughs> just to make it really lovely and poetic. But when, I, when a raindrop lands on my beak, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think, Holy moly, what's going on up there? Is, is, it, is it raining? Is it doing this? What was it like? I, can, I think I've got some kind of free will of my thoughts and my ability to exert my power of cause and effect onto the world. I feel like I can cause things. I feel like I can have some kind of effect on the world through my free will. Mm-hmm. And that's the issue there, isn't it? Yeah, because that could just be an illusion. Like the, the Kant's idea. saying it, it's not... Although Kant's saying it could be an illusion, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we think so we have yeah, it. you should you should just act as if that there is free will. So does your um, criticism hold any weight if we respond with Kant there? If you say Kant's saying we have free will, presupposing this, Kant's like, I don't give a monkeys. Um, yeah, well, I think it still could hold certain weight because like you, it kind of comes back to that idea of like intention of like, so you think you're acting freely. But if you're not, and like, you, like your intentions are just maybe they're already presupposed. So it just causes more and more problems of like everything that Kant says. Like if there isn't free will, then it just doesn't work. And even if you pretend there is, does that, I mean, you're just kidding yourself, right? Yeah, it's fine. I, I, I agree it's, completely, but Kant, I think Kant's so, still but you could say just, yeah, you could just, like, yeah, just kid yourself and just act like in what else? Yeah. You, know, you just, just kind of just stand there and wait for cause and effect to, to get you or yeah yeah i mean i suppose that would be the response i just don't like the response <laughs> <laughs> and he's just stood there in a the room and said come on cause an effect <laughs> do something <laughs> one two three go <laughs> any other criticisms of kent um should we should we carry on should we criticisms of kent should we do one which is we've done our individual one should we do a scenario we haven't done the one with fun. running in the grass mm-hmm. and the pool i can do that okay um Ollie, imagine that you're walking from this room now to your house and um, you stumble upon a beautiful field of grass and it looks fantastic. And in the middle, there is a golden nugget and you're aware that the golden nugget, you're aware of the value of golden nuggets and know that it's worth billions and billions of pounds. Think of the good you can do with that. What would you do out of interest with a billion, billion, billion pounds? It's the first thing you'd do. Uh, no, Genie. Genie's entered the room. Ten seconds. You've got a billion, billion pounds. What do you do? Billion, billion pounds. Ten. Probably buy a house. <laughs> that's <laughs> the, the Genie's like, that's the worst one all day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really need that much money, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a house. Right, so there's a nugget in the middle of this field, and you think, I can get a house if I go grab that nugget. But it says, do don't walk on, on the grass. grass. Well, if I was following the categorical imperative, I would have to walk past the grass and not step on it and leave the nugget because I, I'm i not allowed to walk on the grass. That's one of the universal laws. If everybody walked on the grass, the grass would be ruined. Um, so, But if everyone walked on the grass to get golden nuggets to improve the well-being of people, 
in third world countries with the money rather than buying themselves hedonistic houses. Would that be okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. <Okay. laughs> Come on, as if anyone's ever going to, I'm just going to feed Three. every living being in the world with my golden nuggets. Should we ask Andy? Andy, 10 seconds. Genie in the room. Hello, Andy. Stop thinking. You don't know what I'm going to ask you yet. You have one wish. What will it be? 10 seconds. Go. Wait, do, how what, what do I want? Which you have one wish. Can I ask more wishes? Go. For the entire human race to be happy. Oh, God. I literally <laughs> no, was sticking my mouth a bit. Jesus, <laughs> we've literally had three hours of criticizing happiness as the ultimate Yeah, I know. End. That's why I said That's what you want. Oh, oh God. You you don't really, want much, would that do you? really be what you wish for? Nah. Ultimate, what, <laughs> what, would it, what would it genuinely be? You want... You You've want got five seconds left. It's just gonna no, go. I couldn't. I would take file if I. I don't know because if I was doing it purely on that, I would probably go down a more kind of humanitarian route. Though I would still want to try and do something where the correct like, answer is invested in the podcast. <laughs> and if you want to do that, it's <laughs> www.thefansidekids.com. <laughs> yeah, the, the, if I if I had to spend if if all of the money had to go to something, I wouldn't spend it on myself. Yeah. Interestingly, I've actually been conducting a survey in my own time <laughs> <laughs> using my research grant to really good effect. Um, Did you write up research methods for this? No, it's, uh, the research method is ask somebody if a genie popped in the room, you've got yeah, 10 yeah, seconds, right, you can't right. ask more wishes, go. What would they come up with? Um, she's got a list of what people have said to her. And so, so I'm not going to actually, I'm not going to use names. Someone said a billion pounds. Someone said a mansion and a chocolate fountain. Someone said to win the lottery for all energy sources to be sold Wait, for what? a really good They've life. got more money than the lottery and they want to yeah. win the lottery. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one, uh, I wish I could fly. That's a good one. Uh, another one, to be a footballer. All the money in the world and someone panicked and just said, just expire my time. And it's, oh, it's fairly the thing is, I, I, I guess too. I was getting a bit confused with your statement because I thought we were still stuck on the, it had to be something to do with spending money. Yeah. If oh, the no, genie so just gave just me the, the ability, yeah, control okay, time and space. Control, time, control and space. time and space. That's yeah. Good, so actually. like, you know, with wow. like, uh, in uh, this very outdated TV show now, but the, the show Heroes with like. Fantastic. Her- There's a new Hero series, now. Heroes Reborn. So it's not outdated. It, but it's but, okay, but that's, it's really, oh, really not bad. It, but <laughs> anyway. Not sponsored by Heroes Reborn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sponsored by Heroes. <laughs> The taste you can trust. <laughs> the um, yeah, Hiro Nakamura, the 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 guy who can control time and space. If I could do one thing, that would wouldn't that just be amazing? That'd be awesome. I'd totally do that. That's exactly what I would do. Well, can, I, can I do this as well? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh, okay. So, so what if I had unlimited kind of power? Unlimited power. You want to be omnipotent? Would that be something you subscribe? I to? would like to be omniscient. You want to be omniscient. Mm. So I wouldn't want to control time and space, but I would like to know everything. So you don't want to be omnipotent and omniscient. You just want to be om- no. I just mean to be omniscient. Okay, I was trying to throw you into a paradox there, but what would you no, say? That's no, fine. no, I'm not going to fall yeah, into that. Joke. Not, <laughs> there is I tell you what, I'd like to be able to know you want omni- every single question on a trivial pursuit board. <laughs> you could probably <laughs> do that, it. like yeah. But well, the, no, every single question. That's a lot of questions. That could possibly come up. Yeah. Every fact. There's like, there's like, there's like, race there's like 500. Yeah. So like, what? I just have the knowledge of the uh, entire right. super okay. board. The, the Never rules, get a question wrong. The research methodology is really strict. There's 10 seconds. I have to say your first answer as well. And it's the fairly odd parents paradox. Okay. So if you say something which comes, which could be misconstrued by Cosmo and Wanda, it will happen. Okay. So <laughs> to control time and space, I'm not sure, but that could be time and space could be. Uh, you've, pro- you've probably done quite well there. Um, someone who said for all energy sources to be sold, you could just have like a can of delicious, relentless pop up and give you that energy boost that yeah, you need yeah. to get. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stop doing this. Uh, to say this is a ramble, it's a massive <laughs> understatement. <laughs> In like 10 years, all these companies are going to yeah. come to the door and be like, <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. But it's a good question, isn't it? So where did, what would people really wish for? I think this has got something to do with what we're talking about. Are you <laughs> sure? <laughs> no, we were using the example of the golden nugget and the categorical comparative, nugget. which is nothing to do with the genie, <laughs> what we were talking about. It's an interesting all. question though, isn't it? Uh, uh, but no, the question originally was, would Kant allow you to get that golden nugget to yeah. spend it on things that were good? So what for feeding? clothing poor people and stuff yeah but this is the end of the maxim wasn't it if you were yeah. going to so again with john stuart mill he's looking at i love how we've this is coming right back around to it isn't it with john stuart mill saying you can't do the categorical imperative without looking at the end result so the maxim i will get the golden nugget you know to control time and space in that scenario it's okay because it's you, out of the sense of duty controlling time and space could be good well not good but you're doing it for the sense of duty yeah. 
if you lost me a little bit a little bit because <laughs> well, no, well, I mean, the, the combination even... of the golden nugget and <laughs> yeah. the genie are two completely <laughs> that different that was things. not the example <laughs> that was not the example no, I had a in my magical head at all. golden nugget that can grant you any wish like <laughs> no can we, can we can we change it slightly so the example I'm familiar with is that you can't walk on the grass and there's a there's a pond okay, in the all right, right if you're, if you someone's drowning in the pond if you wanted to do X but X wasn't out of a sense of duty then you couldn't do X to accomplish Y yeah so like yeah if someone's drowning in the middle of the pond that you can't get to because you can't walk on the grass because you're not allowed to walk on the grass because the carry go to imperatives. So this is grass and then yeah. a pond. Yeah. 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 So the pond's in the middle of the grass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we can't say you are allowed to step on the grass to save their life. And if you're following the categorical imperative, the answer is no because you're not allowed supposed to be walking because everyone can walk on the grass. Yeah. If you fo- even if the consequence is to save a life, that doesn't matter because not, that's not reasonable. It's illogical. But it feels like we're treating Kant absurdly in the same way we have with utilitarianism last time. We're drawing up these stupid examples. Well, no, but the thing is, that's which... the, no, because it's not a stupid example because it raises the question of you, when you have two conflicting maxims, like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. So, yeah. like, that's a big criticism. Uh, it, so, yeah, do I follow the maxim of save the life or do I follow the maxim of not walk on the grass? And it seems to be really obvious that you would want to save the life, but actually you're supposed to fulfill both okay. and you can't do it. Do you both think you understand Kant now after this? Yeah, a little bit better. Okay, so you're both going to take the role of Kant, right? Sure. Nine. Ollie, will you rub this magic lamp? Genie appears. Hello, Emmanuel Kant. You have ten seconds to make a wish. What shall it be? That all N- people not for more wishes. Also, ten seconds go. <laughs> <laughs> Are there the, any other footnotes to this wish? Um, the, the human race could live in a kingdom of ends. Boom. Second Kant. You're not, you're not just going to ride on the ends of that. <laughs> human beings. Like, should, yeah, we uh, got you. Genie. Human beings should all follow the categorical imperative. Super. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I was... All right. Fair enough. I was, <laughs> what was the point what in that? What were you hoping no, okay. <laughs> How about someone who was following Kantian ethics? What are they going to wish for? Kant to be resurrected and Kant to Kant. lead us to the Holy Land. They would. I uh, know. They would say exactly the but, same thing. No, but to follow the categorical, and com- categorical imperative, resurrection is an interesting point in this genie scenario. We've got a, quite an interesting thought experiment here, which will probably be written about for thousands of years to come. So let's roll with this. If someone was to say genie resurrects Kant, then the maxim is resurrect people who were influential or resurrect people because we're going to treat people as ends in themselves right so we're going to value the human life we're going to value humans well it depends on right? why you wanted to resurrect him yeah if you want to sure. resurrect him to just have a chat no but like, the teleological end doesn't matter Kant saying you treat people as ends in themselves so you need to resurrect people because you're rolling your eyes. Like no, no, no. I'm, no, I'm, no, no that wasn't a roll of the eyes. That was a, yes, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm following. following. Yeah. Yes. So if you were to resurrect someone, you should always resurrect people because it does what Kantian ethics wants you to do. You should keep people alive because that's a part of your duty. Hmm. So it would end up with an overpopulated planet and it disregards the teleological ends. So a Kantian is going to make some wishes which, if they could come to be, are going to cause some real big problems. problems. Yeah. yeah. That. Yes. yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Cool. Philosophical ultimatum. We've reached that time in the show again. Everyone's favourite part, philosophical ultimatum. We have no sponsors this week. Uh, sponsorships being reviewed. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've had Mountain Dew. We've had Starbucks. We've had Revels. Uh, we've had Apple. Wimpies. We've had also, this is on iTunes and we've just slammed Apple like, in like, every episode as have well. Have we slammed Apple? Yeah. Oh, we oh yeah, 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 we really did that today. We did that, we we did that last, we did last time week well, and yeah. the no time wonder, before. We're only on the... Um, There's lovely no wonder we're not high up in the charts on the podcast. I know, it's like, know, it's, right? that's the only reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apart from, we didn't mention in the other one, uh, we're, in the, we're one of the most popular education podcasts in Italy. So big shout out to the Good, Cis- yeah. Islanders on Sicily. This is true. I wasn't... Yeah. I can't see you behind your, your uh, filter. What's hello in Italian? Um, Buongiorno. No, um, you can say ciao. Ciao's okay to say. Well, that's goodbye, isn't it? I think it's both. You can say yeah. ciao to a friendly person. Um, I know. Um, can, we do, can we just like Google Translate ciao Italian? No, fan. we need to, we need to. Gen- if our Italian listeners are listening, we don't even know how to speak the language, and yet they can understand Kant in English. <laughs> it's like we need well, to do some work. On I that am point, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, Bellissimo is beautiful. So there you go. Bellissimo. 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 Anything else? Also, thanks for the pizza. 
<laughs> that there we go. Didn't pizza. take as long to get to stereotypes, isn't it? Right. So <laughs> no longer in also uh, place in the top that twenty-five chart Italy. of the Italian <laughs> education podcast is also being reviewed. <laughs> Philosophical ultimatum. Let's do it. How do you think the game's going in the previous episodes? Well, I haven't won. I one feel yet. like it's skewed largely Andy wins. to me. Yeah, because but I haven't won. I haven't won camp. a mug yet, which I feel. A bit of a mug about. It's okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, you'll get all your prizes. If you were following the categorical bomb. imperative, Jack, <laughs> I would your... have two mugs. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll all get it there. God exists and so does the afterlife. So you'll achieve that in some. That's good. So I, I guess, it, yeah, I'm, I shouldn't be trying to win the competition for the, the success and glory. Yeah, yeah you should, should just, just do it for the sake of juicy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, Andy. Okay, let's go. Ollie's buzzer goes. That's a really cool sound, isn't it? And Andy's goes. Oh, that's a great noise. <laughs> like it. Right, okay. Canteen Ethics provides a helpful method of moral decision making. <laughs> Ollie buzzed in first. Ollie, what's your answer? I would say that Tell it's helpful. I don't think it's the absolute end, but I think it's a good... I think it... If you can get to grips with it, which is probably the hardest thing, but I think once you've kind of got an understanding of it, I think most of us, when we were looking at what we liked about it, kind mm-hmm. of agreed there were strong elements to it. I mean, I like the idea that every human being has dignity um, and the idea that even if you just think about your actions and their impact on others, just thinking about what you're doing and the universal impact of that, if everyone would, was doing what you were doing, would you think that was a good thing to do as a general reflection? I think it is useful, yes, or helpful, whichever one it was. Can I jump in as the host? I, I, sure. It's a really interesting thought experiment, isn't it? I do like it. It's, it. it sings quite nicely in my head. But unfortunately, your answer is incorrect because you did say yes. Andy, do you want to jump in and give your... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, I'm going to disagree um, because, I, I mean, this is personally... I, I feel like the what you've said is I would agree with that using people... not. Using people Remember, as early, means. in an early episode, you didn't answer the question directly. You need a yes or a no. Right, so by... no. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and the reason why is because it's it's like I think Kant's trying to explain what is moral, but not actually outlining a particularly good guidance of how to follow that. I mean, we've picked about the criticisms, and and I think it's really difficult. It's either too abstract, or it just doesn't seem to make sense all the time. That. While I'm happy to with the idea of like don't don't treat people as means to an end, sometimes there's going to be a very big contradiction of maxims pot- potentially that are going to cause a lot of problems for that idea. Superb. Sorry, one point to Andy there. <laughs> Is Kantian ethics too abstract to be applicable to practical moral decision making? Andy, you buzzed in. Well, I've literally, I guess I just answered this question <laughs> in my previous so one. Okay, so right. can, we, can we repeat the Bear answer? Mind, for just anyone gave. studying A-level, if you have a question, you answer it and then say, just look at my last answer. You're going to get no <laughs> marks. Okay, this is really bad practice. Okay. And answer the question directly. Yes. So, unfortunately, Ollie, do you want to jump in with you? <laughs> no. Wait, no, what was the question again? Is it too abstract? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, one all. Fantastic. <laughs> there we go. Um... Right. Kantian ethics is so reliant on reason that it unduly rejects the importance of other factors such as sympathy, empathy, and love in moral decision making. Do you agree or disagree? Agree with the statement or agree with the the statement? Mm -hmm. Yes, but I think Kant would say that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Wait, I'm answering your side now. No, well, we're not, we're not, yeah. Guess, yeah, okay, yeah. Just... So it's yeah. So Kant says it doesn't matter that you you need reason. I mean, Kant's seen as kind of like a bridge, isn't he, between like empiricism and reasoning? Like he's kind of seen as someone who's not just kind of dependent, like someone like Aquinas, who's just kind of not very empirical at all. Um, and the the focus for Kant is reasoning. And I guess from his point of view, thinking that everyone, wait, what did I say? No, I just... sorry, no, no, it's fine. Um, I'm just going to call you up on one little thing. Okay. Aquinas isn't very empirical at all. Do you think the, there's an argument that he's not, obviously, because he's appealing to God? Yeah. But his teleology, teleology from Aristotle. Yeah. 
Would you say that's empirical? Well, it's, it, it's, it's, ob- it's about reason? observing nature uh, like as it is. So technically, it would be okay. Fall under empiricism. Okay. Yeah. But that is, I'm not going to downmark you for that because I think okay. exactly no, what no. you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I just obviously haven't listened enough to the podcast <laughs> to uh, get good enough marks. <laughs> Hence, why I always lose <laughs> philosophical <laughs> ultimatum. Um, no, so you're right. Kant's not going. to Kant doesn't care. Yeah. Does he? He's not. He doesn't care that he doesn't bring in sympathy. Because he, I guess and love. He's he's an empathetic. He, he, so he could argue that sympathy, empathy, and love would cause you to make the wrong moral decision yeah. right so if you love someone and you know that it could skew you in any way you know you might yeah. you view that person as more important than somebody else or you know, something like that could i give a quick defense of kant here yes just quickly and uh, sympathetic um just quickly um situation ethics is something we may look at we're supposed yes. to for the yeah, we, yeah, so that links yeah. nicely there it so does yeah. i think situation ethics if you've done that already what ollie was saying there andy yeah um so i would i would still say that it does cause problems for all the st- things in the statement, but Kant could, would still argue, like, you, you're still allowed to be a loving person. You're still allowed to have emotions and care about people in this way. Um, and in, in part, you can act leading towards those. They just can't be the only reason why you act. So you're allowed to feel sympathy for the homeless person, mm-hmm. but you can't act just based on that sympathy like you you're allowed to have emotion like you you don't have to be this logical robot that just goes like does not compute with the categorical imperative like that <laughs> that would be insane like he doesn't he's not yeah. mad like he does understand human emotion so i think there is there is a bit of a defense there you should look at the point too and he just because of the robot impression. <laughs> <laughs> Is that two one? Two three, one? I think it's like three. Three one. Okay. Three, 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 um also, philosophical automatum isn't just some silly game we play at the end. These are the questions you yeah. need to know for the A-level. And I think we go into some real good depth and analysis on them. Which <laughs> you know, the criticisms and the strengths that we outlined before philosophical automatum were the actual content. Our, our answers to these It's controversial. Yeah. We're unsure. Andy, you are our winner once again. Insert three mugs. Three mugs, three mugs, yeah. But I didn't do it for the mug. Mm. I did it. So you won't mind if you don't get the mugs? <laughs> now, would it be wrong of me to promise keep <laughs> yeah, that you will get mugs? Yes. Well, yeah, yes, no, yeah. You have to by your own. But uh, I didn't acquire, I didn't get to that understanding through my reason alone. So I I think I used my reason. I decided the greatest happiness for the greatest number of people. And my pleasure would far outweigh your pain <laughs> if I, <laughs> if kept, I, didn't if I just the kept the mugs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think we can all agree with that. Sure. <laughs> Not that I ever had a chance of winning the mugs anyway, <laughs> so I don't care. Anyone? Should we play the game? Is there anyone more influential? So far on the list, we have Aristotle, Aquinas, the big JC, the big G, and that's it's four. Are we going to put him on the list with the top five? Former it's ultimate almost super group pop band. It's almost, <laughs> as if, <laughs> it's almost as everyone we look at the, is very influential. Yeah, yeah, mean, we'll try and look at someone not very influential in the future. <laughs> <laughs> someone who no one cares yeah. about because their philosophy <laughs> was awful. <laughs> um, my, I get my closing remarks on Kant. I really like Kant, but I disagree with a lot of what he says as well. But I, I, I do like the, is the, the attempt of trying to treat people with dignity. I think the, the idea that it's not being completely led by emotional responses, um, and kind of a rational th- thought process. Do I think everyone can just naturally access this all the time? Probably not. But like, I don't think we should, like, if, if you can, you should probably at least try and like follow that to, a, I agree. to its point. I, that's my closing remark as well. Can people? access it they can't so i think <laughs> i think it's lost from the start <laughs> nearly got the whole episode it, it, we did. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, pretty that's good the actually first, the yeah. first part. Oh, every time we've used the word can yeah. i'm just thinking hmm, can't mm. can i go there can't i do this can yeah. i do it congratulations you've just reached the end of can't that is very impressive i mean I genuinely think it is. Like, that is. That's amazing. So congratulations. And thank you very much for listening to our wonderful podcast. If I do say so myself. You've been listening to the soothing voices of Oliver Marley. Enjoy your free will. And Jack Symes. Enjoy categorizing your imperatives. And Andrew Horton. You got something wizard no. to say? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Andrew Horton. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> she- <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
smell you later. <laughs> Something just so funny. <laughs> Screw you guys. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like I said, we have a backlog of ones we're going to be releasing week by week. So when you're listening to this, all those episodes in the last five have been pre-recorded. You don't need to know any of this stuff, really, do you? The next episode will be the ontological argument. It's going to be really, really awesome and cool and wicked zinger meal. So make sure... <laughs> What about Jack? <laughs> Next left episode. So make sure you go to KFC and enjoy their delicious free range chicken. Has <laughs> someone paid off this guy? <laughs> Same great taste. And animals are looked after too. That's the Colonel's motto. Yeah. You could say next week we're get, it's going to be a bit more theological, maybe. Something like that. We're going back to the philosophy of religion section, aren't we? We've just done um, three episodes on ethics. Super big episodes because they're big yeah. theories. We're going to go back to what we're doing before. We, if you remember, we did Aristotle, Plato, um, body and minds, and now we've done Aquinas, utilitarianism, Kant. Now we're going to do ontological, cosmological, teleological, and then we'll put a cap on that. Maybe think about doing the rest of the ethics stuff and enjoy that. Yeah. Anything bring else? your god hat. Bring your god hat. Bring your god hat. Yeah. Get into God's skin for a little bit. Move around, <laughs> move around for a while. And a plate of coffee. <laughs> a plate of coffee and an animal skin. You'll be absolutely fine. Did we enjoy doing ethics for the nine, ten hours? Which I'm sure Did enjoyed we, listening to us talk about ethics over, over and over and over again. While I've been editing, that. I've I've enjoyed having a lot of the the discussions. I think we've had a bit of fun with it, and yeah. we tried not to keep it too. Dry yeah, and you can apply. You've had fun too. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You can apply. You can apply it to many different situations, and that's the fun bit: coming up with the situations and applying it. So yeah, miss yeah. That. I've enjoyed that. Maybe we can do it with the God arguments too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah we'll, we'll oh, yeah. find some good things yeah. and not be offensive at the same time. I'm sure we'll manage. Yeah, <laughs> we always do. <laughs>